Good evening, everybody. Um, thanks for taking the time tonight to uh, have a discussion about Ontario's Wildlife Compensation Program. Um, just so you know, we are uh, recording this so that uh, we can we can publish it on our uh, various communications channels. Um, so those of uh, anybody that uh, missed today's or tonight's um, webinar can view it at a later later date. Um, if you're wanting to ask a question, uh, there's a, a dashboard on your, should, you should be able to see it on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, so feel free to add any questions there, and as I see them, I'll uh, attempt to address them. I may wait until later in the presentation to, to get at them, but please um, include uh, or, or write down any questions that you might have. Um, if there's anybody that can't hear me, um, you can mention that in the chat, uh, but um, it's everything seems to be working on our end. So uh, again, if you have an issue with the audio, uh, just type in the chat and uh, Beth or I will try to assist you. Um, otherwise, I think we'll get started. Uh, so uh, um, let's just run through a presentation outline of what we're going to talk about tonight. So. Just a little uh, background on the 2017 program changes uh, that were made to the compensation program. The current program performance, so what is the uh, program doing in terms of um, decline rates and acceptance rates under the, the new program changes that we've had for about a year and a half now. Uh, some steps and tips uh, for reporting uh, if you experience a predation related event on your farm. Um, the meat of the presentation is to discuss uh, recommendations and advice from BFO's perspective on, on how to best position your, your application for, for success under the new guidelines. Uh, and, and lastly, uh, just a, a little conversation about the program review, which some of you may have heard about. Uh, so there is, there is a, a review process in the works that, that could lead to uh, some program changes in the future. But as of right now, this is the program that we have for responding to uh, predation incidents on, on Ontario farms, uh, and uh, that's what the focus of the presentation will be. So just quickly in terms of the main uh, changes that were introduced on January 1st, 2017 to the Wildlife Compensation Program, first and foremost was a, a move away from um, uh, valuers determining market price for killed or injured animals uh, on farm. So I'll refer to them as, as valuers or livestock investigators interchangeably. They were previously um, referred to as, as livestock valuers under the new program. They're, they're livestock investigators or municipal investigators. Um, either way, one of the main changes was no longer are those uh, investigators determining market value. Uh, there is uh, basically for cattle, they use the Ontario average price from two months prior to the kill. So if you, you, had a, if you have a May kill, they're using the, um, the March Ontario average price for March uh, for that class and, and uh, uh, age of, of the animal. Uh, so that will penalize uh, 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 producers that typically beat the Ontario average, and those that that uh, fall, you know, uh, don't typically meet that average will will be getting more. So there's there's certainly trade-offs to doing an average price. Um, centralized decision making. So uh, investigators are now largely confined to evidence gatherers. Um, OMAFRA has the they make a determination on whether an application should be paid out or not, uh, and that same goes for the appeals process. So uh, while the investigator will make a recommendation um, based on their findings, the decision making now is is uh, entirely with uh, within the OMAFRA program staff. The forms, as you'll notice if you've had experience with the new program, um, are, have changed. Uh, they're more detailed. There's, uh, there's more uh, check boxes and uh, uh, areas to fill out. Um, it is a lengthier form uh, that requires more information, uh, and that uh, um, 
that's all there is to say about the forms. Uh, a reasonable care plan is another new requirement under the program. So this basically is a requirement that any producer that has had five or more um, applications in a given program year, which is the calendar year, is required to complete a reasonable care plan before they can receive any subsequent um, or, or make any subsequent applications. So on your sixth application before you do that, you have to get this plan uh, approved by OMAFRA. Uh, there is a template on their website uh, to do that. Um, and any claims that you or any applications that you may make in the interim uh, are, are basically held until your reasonable care plan is approved. Um, so you're not ineligible during that time, but the, the a, an assessment of your application for those that fall your plans under review um, uh, are, are held. So um, the the last sort of big program change was uh, the appeals process is is now different than it was under previous iterations of the program. Um, basically, if you uh, if you feel that um, your application has not been correctly assessed and that you deserve uh, either more compensation or that your application deserves to be approved when it wasn't. Uh, you do have the opportunity to appeal the decision. Uh, letters can be sent to the OMAFRA uh, program administrator. The, uh, the uh, location of where that letter should be is on the screen here on the first bullet point. In that letter, there's a couple things that you should focus on, uh, including uh, one is the application number that you would get in your letter from OMAFRA outlining their decision um, that you wish to appeal the outcome of the application, uh, your reasons for appealing uh, the, the initial decision, and uh, any additional evidence uh, to substan substantiate your reasons for appealing. So we'll get into... Um, sort of a due diligence recommendation that, that we're putting forward that BFO is suggesting producers uh, consider. So uh, that's going to be the meat of the presentation, but the long and the short of it is um, don't rely on the livestock investigator to do all the work. Uh, if you want to position yourself for success with the, within the program, uh, you need to do or you should consider doing some of the evidence gathering yourself um, and that becomes important uh, during an appeal process as well because uh, then you have sort of two accounts of uh, your sort of finding of the incident the, the, uh, that, that could help you if you decide to go to appeal. There is a $25 fee payable to the Minister of Finance by check or money order. Uh, and basically the process, so the change that, that uh, under the new iteration of the program is it, there is one director of appeals who will review your 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 application for reassessment, and they have 20 business days of the stand, service standards, 20 business days from receiving the appeal to make a make a decision. Um, the director could uh, award a higher amount or a lower amount or deny the claim, so uphold the initial decision or overturn it, um, and they will provide a copy of the decision to the owner and the program administrator in your respective municipality. So there's been a lot of uh, uh, talk and discussion about the program or the new program given some of the or the increase that we've seen in the number of declined applications. Um, so just to give you a sense of what that looked like under the first year of the new program, just over 1,600 applications, uh, 1,200 and change. Uh, 363 were declined with another 39, um, you know, in the process of assessment or appeal decision at the time that we received these stats. So still a good majority of, of applicants are receiving compensation. Um, it might not be at a rate that they, they feel is, is just or, or correct, uh, but still the majority are being uh, approved. But that 23% decline rate is substantially higher than than we had seen under previous iterations of the program. It, it typically hovered around the 5% rates and, and we're up to, you know, 2017 was 23%. So breaking that down of the 23% decline rate, uh, and this will give you a sense of where you should be focusing your, your uh, 
your application uh, efforts, 20% of that 23 was basically for cross compliance or check checkbox exercise requirements. So two requirements you need to have to get approved for compensation. You need an FBR number, so a farm business registration number, and a valid premises ID number. Um, some of the other portions that make up that 20% are things like uh, you applied, you, you had an injured animal, uh, it didn't die, and you had I'd for for basically the the costs uh, the vet costs and you didn't provide the bill um, from your vet to validate the injury or, or provide um, you know transparency in, in how much was spent. But the vast majority, and I think the 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 biggest issues with the program from the producer perspective that BFO has heard uh, certainly on the insufficient evidence. Uh, piece so not providing enough evidence to validate or substantiate that predation was was the the cause of the death or injury breaking that down majority is is 70 percent of that 80 percent is is omafra decision so uh, the investigator has found in their opinion sufficient evidence and then it gets to to omafra and uh, there's a disagreement there, and, and they've declined uh, the, the application. There is a percentage of 10%, uh, as you'll see, where the um, investigator has uh, has found that insufficient evidence has occurred. Just a point of clarity, too, um, if the investigator will submit his application or her application uh, to OMAF for, for review, even if they've they've said they they haven't found sufficient evidence, and there has been cases, very few, but there has been cases where OMAF actually you know reverses the decision and has awarded uh, the the applicant um, compensation. So it does go both ways, uh, but this this eighty percent is is certainly the uh, the biggest issue. Um, this table on this slide will it it provides a breakdown of that 363 declined applications. Um, again, the vast majority uh, fall under that insufficient evidence as determined by OMAFRA category. So that's where the majority of this, the remainder of the webinar will focus on, on ensuring that you put yourself in the best position to provide, you know, sufficient or as, as sufficient enough evidence to, to, uh, to warrant a, a compensation award. Um, just to note that some applications had multiple reasons for, for being declined. Uh, these numbers would, would relate to sort of the primary reason for, for uh, 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 a declined application. And again, it's, it's largely within this middle, um, middle category. So when a kill or injury is discovered on your farm, um, first step for you to do is to contact your local investigator or your municipality within 48 hours of discovering the kill or the injury. Um, just in, you know, don't wait 48 hours. I, I, we would recommend as soon as you discover the the uh, uh, the incident site or or carcass to to report it immediately. Um, as we'll get into in a you know, it's it's fairly common sense, but you know, evidence will deteriorate pretty quickly, and and uh, particularly during certain times of year, or certain weather uh, events or weather conditions. So, don't wait. As soon as you um, discover it, make the call. Um, from that point, the investigator is required to conduct an investigation within three days, um, and there could be a little bit of a lag time, but between the time that you're con, if especially if you contact the municipality, by the time they get to the investigator, it could be. Uh, longer than that. So uh, if you wait 48 hours and then there's three three plus days after that, that's a long time to, uh, for, for a carcass to sit um, uh, outside in the elements. Um, so in the meantime, um, do your own due diligence. So we're going to get into what that means, but um, that's probably the biggest takeaway from the webinar tonight. Just the, the scrutiny of claims has reached such a, a level that it's in producers' best interest to to do some of this work um, as soon as they discover uh, uh, the the carcass or an injured livestock. Uh, 